simple economist. Um, that means that if you forget your phone number, I'll estimate it for you. I know I forget mine a lot. Um, but to me, the question of, how, of the cost of creating a job really gets down to, it's, it's a very interesting question. It has, uh, I think, different ways of answering that question. The first place I would go in addressing that would be really how, how much does it cost to create a business because all jobs are created at private businesses. I'm not counting government jobs, okay? But when we're talking about really trying to uh, grow jobs, we're talking about businesses, private businesses. So really, the, when I started thinking about the question, the question comes down to how much does it cost to create a business? And um, that's kind of, that, that, the first thing that makes you ask is, what does it take to build a business? And to build a business, you need, I would say, five things, which I can go through very quickly. The first is you need to be an entrepreneur. You need entrepreneurship ability. You need somebody who's ready to take the risk the risk of, of, uh, of starting a business. And uh, some people say you can train entrepreneurship, and I think you know a certain amount of development money has gone into entrepreneurship training. I've never really understood that. I think that entrepreneurs are born, not made. But anyway, you need entrepreneurs. And there are plenty of entrepreneurs in Kosovo, I think. Um, Second thing you need is a product, you know, it needs to be uh, reasonably well designed and, and you need to be able to sell it at a decent price. That's actually another advantage that we have in Kosovo because at least in the uh, area of, of we, it's not, you know, it's possible to desi design products and there are plenty of people that are doing that capably. And in, and in terms of price, we have a great advantage because labor costs are so low in Kosovo. And, that's, and that is a competitive advantage that has certainly driven the Chinese economy for the last 20 years. And it's definitely something that can drive the Kosovo economy. The third thing you need is a market. Um, and that's also not a problem because we're sitting here right under Europe, which is whatever it is, 13 trillion a year, it's big. And we don't need to do a whole lot to, uh, you know, we don't need a whole lot of business from that market to, to generate a lot of sales for Kosovo companies. We also have an import competing market that is very, that has a lot of potential. Um, just to, okay, I mean, Kosovo imports three and a half billion euros worth of goods a year and maybe we can't make three billion of those goods here, but we can make 500 million of them here, and that's a lot of business. So that, which, which is capable of creating a lot of jobs. The fourth thing you need is workers, skilled workers. A number of us are working in that area. And the last thing you need is technology. You need equipment to be able to produce the goods that you want to sell. That comes down to be a question mainly of access to finance. Not going to go into all that stuff, but okay, so that's what it takes to create a business. If you can line all of that up, then you can build a business. Um, so when, when, you, when you're looking at how much it costs to create a job, I would start looking at how many jobs you get per thousand euros of sales or for, per 10,000. So, so what is the sales per employee ratio that uh, generates employment in, in Kosovo? Um, and, I, and I think that that's on average somewhere between 10 and 20,000 euros per, per employee. Sometimes it's, high, it's quite a bit higher. Uh, but, it, but let's say that's sort of where we are. If it's 20,000 euros per job, then a $100,000 business is going to create five jobs, and a million dollar business is going to create 50 jobs. So the issue really is how do you build those businesses and what does it take, what kind of investment do you need to do to build those businesses. One way of looking at it is to, is to say, 
what is the value of a business? And one of the sort of standard uh, rules of thumb in investing is uh, a business is worth one times its sales. Uh, you can get fancier than that and sometimes they're worth a lot more than that. I'm not talking about Google and Facebook, uh, which are worth many, many, many times their sales because they have such fantastic future potential. But let's say a, a, a sort of an average production business could be bought for one times its sales in many cases. What that does is get you right back to what I was talking about a minute ago. It, the cost to create, and that, that's a very straightforward way of looking at it. If I can buy a business for one times its sales, and it's a million dollar business, I'm going to pay a million dollars for it, and that's going to create 50 jobs at 20,000 euros per, per job of, of, uh, of, uh, of, say, of sales per job. So that's one way of looking at it. It's 20,000. Um, another way of looking at it is how much it costs, and this is a completely different way of looking at it, is how much it costs to train a person. Because if you can train a person for a job that exists in the market, which is another thing we do a lot of on the power private sector in cooperation with Argentina and I and other um, projects around here, um, if you can train a person to be qualified for a job, then whatever the cost of that training is, is the cost of a job. So, what does it take to train a person for a job? Well, most people end up going to uh, grammar school and high school, and that's free, sort of, not really, because the government has to pay for that. So whatever, your, whatever the cost of the educational system is divided by the number of kids that are in it is some measure of what it costs to create a job. And then after basic school and middle school, secondary school, then you, maybe you go to college. And college can be all over the place. If I send you to Harvard, it's going to cost $250,000 before you get out of there or more. Or if I go to a state school, or, or you know, a Kosovo or U UP, I don't know exactly. I don't really know exactly what it costs. But let's say it's a few thousand euros to get out of UP. So I don't know what that adds up to. If you get to the point where you're sort of looking at um, what do I need to invest to train a person for an actual job, and you're looking at say vocational education and training the kind of stuff that we do look at a lot in, in, in development, that is really economical. You can train a lot of people for not a whole lot of money, and as soon as they're trained, they're, um, they're, they're employable, you know. So I uh, like this project that we're collaborating with ION in, in uh, females in, IU, in, in, in investment technology at AUK. I mean, I think the cost per job of that comes out to less than a thousand euros, you know, by the time they're trained. So, or something like that. In fact, I think it, you know, about a thousand euros, maybe something around that. And um, so that's a very economical way of creating jobs. And certainly in our project, if we look at the amount that we've invested in workforce programs, divided by the number of jobs that we expect to create, it's less than a thousand euros per job. Now, of course, recognize that that's built on a lot of public investment in education that went before that. So that's uh, another way. If you're talking about the last element, if you're talking about the cost of a development project to create a job, then it really depends on what you're doing and how, how you want to attribute that to job creation. Um, I used to do, uh, I used to facilitate uh, economic growth training for USAID in Washington for all of the incoming uh, new staff to AID twice a year. We had a course training them on, one week course to train them on economic growth. I did that for eight years. And there are basically four sort of categories of economic growth uh, activities that, you know, you would.